So we had a board meeting without Tiffany Hanyard. Very interesting. We're going to talk about some of the highlights of the meeting, and we're going to talk about some fake news involving Tiffany Hanyard. Let's get into it. Now, you know that's not fair, sneaking up on a man when he's in a Tiffany juicy burger. Seeing that you're here, let me just feed you in. When a man well, do you you ever eat your burger and it looks like that when you're eating it? Like when, when you order a nice burger and then you're biting it, you know, you're enjoying yourself. Does it look like that? I mean, I don't know. Burger like this in his hand. <laughs> Why are you jiggling it? <laughs> this, that was a fantastic commercial. Fan, just a fantastic commercial. I, I don't know why the Sharks didn't. Why they didn't give her a chance? Like why why, why didn't give her any uh why didn't give her the 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 spot? I think that's the biggest thing. Stan Brown switching sides now, just her and Andrew Holmes. Now I have residents that said come to this meeting. Some said don't come to this meeting. I'm not here jumping ship. Or I never was on the ship to jump a ship. Always been here. Come on, Stan. The one thing that Tiffany Hanyard values is loyalty. And the fact that Stan going to that meeting without her present, it is jumping ship. She's not happy about that. Or possibly, and some people talked about this in the live yesterday, is it possible that Stan is trying to play both sides? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. That's where we are. So that's the biggest point that, that came out of this meeting that totally surprised me. Stan Brown came to the meeting. To try to save himself, he, he, no long, he no longer wants any more of Tiffany Good Burgers. He finally figured out what the feds were around. Because I don't know if you've seen, it was a really long, it was maybe two or three meetings ago where he was asking the questions at the meeting about the feds being around as if he had no idea why they were there. Maybe he didn't know. This has to be a big blow to the super mayor, Tiffany Hanyard. Being at the meeting, being with the other trustees, and as you see from some of the stuff, again, it was really hard to, to hear the audio. They're trying to work with the comptroller to try to unfreeze the funds because of all the stuff that were going on. The reason why the comptroller froze those funds because there are certain documents that they were not submitting on time. So they're trying to figure that out. They're also trying to figure out how to find a new bank. The last bank that was with them rejected them, saying, we don't want to deal with you and this account anymore. So they we see this coming. Uh, with that, uh, myself, Clark T, the ex and your piece, and make sure the vital services continue. Uh, because the mayor's office was disappointed in that they contacted our bank, claiming false, false signatures on the bank account. The bank essentially said, We're not playing these games. I'm tired of it. It gave us a 60 day bonus that then leads to that at our town. Well, within the side fair, we need to follow it. A little bit part. Yeah. They're, trying to, they're trying to clean up some situations here. And then they brought, I guess you could say, brought back Keith Freeman. He was restored as the village administrator because that, and well, you know what? It wasn't a meeting. When Tiffany Hay was talking, it wasn't a meeting because there was no quorum. But she tried to appoint Michael Smith as the village administrator, which doesn't make any sense. The board didn't approve. There was no quorum. Why Michael Smith is even being suggested that he, he can be a village administrator doesn't make any sense. And I know that there is a confusion, and I think it was great for the trustee Norwood to talk about Keith Freeman because I think I saw a comment earlier. Is Keith Freeman, is he a criminal? Yes, he has committed criminal acts. He is under indictment for bankruptcy fraud. He owes $90,000 to the village of Robbins. He has an extensive background of being, you know, a scammer for the most part. But right now, currently, he is doing everything that the trustees want him to do. Please come and sister on such a I know that it's stated that at the door, we don't want to keep him in to the definition. And they couldn't be burdened from the truth. Well, not only that, the first time he didn't even approve him because they can do it properly. And now that Key Freeman is found and doing the right thing, and he's protected by the Whistleblower Act, uh, they want to look at him. And uh, to your point, um, Stan, I'm going to reach out to you, Brian. I understand that the concern is working from home, but in all honesty, I, mean, 
I've gotten more work done for the residents within the last month or two since he's uh, come to the other side than ever before. And when we talk about putting the residents first, these are the things that I'm considering. I'm thinking about, I mean, because we all know that for years, the residents have called us with complaints and our hands have been tied. So for, for out of three and a half years, I've only been able to experience helping the residents fully with Keith Freeman itself, the village of Minister itself. So um, I just wanted to be clear that I feel that he's an important part um, to the residents to the system, the mayor doesn't like that because what she wants is Keith Freeman's loyalty. And Keith Freeman is going to take care of Keith Freeman. As most of these situations, whether it's politics or crime, when things, when, when the stuff hits the fan, you, you're going to fend for yourself and you're going to throw people under the bus and you're going to start being an informant or, or snitching, whatever you want to call it. So right now, Keith Freeman is doing what he has to do to save himself. And obviously, Hanger wants him gone. But the board is getting everything that they want. So they're like, well, no, you're going to stay. And also, as Norwood said, the whistleblower act. It's not a good idea to fire someone that is saying, hey, listen, this is what's going on in administration. I'm going to tell you all what's going on. Under that whistleblower act, you don't want to fire that person. So it doesn't. it's not a great idea if you do so. Yes, the ratification of the termination of former Deputy Chief Lewis Lacey. The man had no business being a cop anymore. Regardless of how you feel, he was not a great police officer. Too much of his ego was in play. Just a history of not performing the tasks as necessary to be a police officer. I don't know if you guys saw the, the body cam footage, Tyreek Hill, the wide receiver from the Miami Dolphins. How quickly, and, and you can go back and forth on who's at fault. I mean, Tyreek could have just followed directions, but... From the time he was pulled over to the time that he was on the ground, face down on the ground, was probably two minutes. That the, That's the kind of policing that oh, I've seen from Lacey. Very quick, very aggressive. And the fact that he was so loyal to Tiffany Harrod and followed a lot of her nonsense, uh, he should not be a police officer anymore. And, ho and also, he is an extremely terrible person. To scam a widow... And to manipulate thousands of dollars to basically to pretend that he had some kind of a settlement that he's going to pay her back. And he had no settlement. Like, he is a scammer himself. So it's great that he's gone. I loan Mr. Lacey money every week. It looks like every day, $10,000 every week. He told me that he was going to give me my money back when he get his settlement. And then you have the signature there of Denise White Hampton. So as you guys can see right here. On June 8, 2013, Denise White Hampton's husband, Derek Hampton, was fairly shot in the driveway of their home. As a sworn police officer, Lacey responds to the scene, being there to provide assistance and comfort to the grieving widow. However, as the documents reveal, Lacey's actions following this tragedy were anything but noble. Instead of offering general support, Lacey began visiting White Hampton frequently under the, the guise of checking on her safety. And then during these visits, he expressed his romantic interest in her, falsely claimed that he was unmarried and, and he was falling in love with her. Lacey's manipulation of Denise White Hampton during a time of immense vulnerability is disgusting. Revealing what kind of person Louis Lacey is and how can he ever be in a position of public trust. So you see right here, he was falling in love with the plaintiff and falsely represented that he was an unmarried man. He is married. He told Denise White Hampton that he was seriously in debt and requested a cash loan. And he just lied, falsely represented that he had a lawsuit pending and would provide substantial funds for the repayment of the loan and said repayment will be forthcoming upon receipt of this settlement. There was no settlement. And the plaintiff, Denise White Hampton, believed and relied upon the defendant, Louis Lacey's representation set forth in paragraphs four and six, was induced to lend to the defendant on or about the following dates, the sums set forth thereafter. And this is the amount of money that she was giving him during this time. It seems like a, Tiffany Hayward has little to no power as the mayor of Dalton, because now it's going to be just her. And Andrew Holmes. Have you seen a video of stopping an officer for keeping women? Yes, I did. We, we talked about that a couple of months ago. It was extremely disturbing how he was so callous in the way he was speaking to her, where she clearly is having some kind of mental episode. 
And the police officer, she's basically trying or she's saying, I'm going to choke myself. And the one officer tries to stop it. And then Lacey says, no, if she chokes herself out, whatever, it's fine. Like, she'll be okay. She'll just choke herself out. It'll be okay. Like, that's the kind of policing that, and that's the kind of tactics, and that's his way of doing things. He, he can't be a police officer. He can't do that. Especially now. Like, we need to have an understanding that mental health is, is important. When people are having an episode, that there need to be some level of understanding and not just the callous way of, the, of approaching when someone is going through something like that. Right? They, she's in the police station at that point. There was no threat of violence there. She's clearly having some issues. And for him to do what he did, it's surprised that he still was able to continue to be a police officer even after that. Uh, Prince talking about Kwame Raul. Yeah. You know, when the DNC was in Chicago and a lot of people were online trying to get Kwame Raul's attention. And the only thing you can say is, well, you know, the Haney administration did violate the Open Meetings Act. That's it. He's not going to do more than that. He's going to wait, just like the governor, he's going to wait for the feds to make their decision. He He's going to step out of it. And, and it feels very political. It feels like everyone is, because he's a Democrat and Haney is a Democrat, I guess. And that, and that's, that's really the sad part about it. When people stay on the same team or they have a team of, well, I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat. And you see one of your fellow politicians just doing something ridiculous and you pretend that you don't see it, you act like it didn't exist. And then when the when the feds come in to do some investigation, you just, you know, you what you clean your hands and walk away. You're like, well, they're gonna take care of it. I don't know what's going on. It's just a small village. I mean, a lot of those things must be at play, the fact that he has not done anything, except a few declaring that the Open Meetings Act was was affected. Like, come on, a JB Prisker, which you know, he was trying to be the vice president. That didn't work out. You know, even when he said very early on, well, just go, you know, just just let just let the you know, we'll just let the feds they, they're here and it's all good and you know, we'll support them if necessary. They don't care. If you don't know by now, they don't care. They don't care. We really, I don't know what else really to say. They don't care. I think I saw something school related. The school district with Tiffany Heron. Hold on a second, guys. Let me see if I can find it. District. I appreciate you guys for being here. I hit the like, subscribe, all those good things. Okay. So this is a new story right here that was published three hours ago. Dalton school official claims that she was she was suspended for questioning the use of $13 million. Another shakeup in Dalton, this time concerning the South Suburb Superintendent and Board of Education. The deputy superintendent put on unpaid leave is now suing in federal court because she says she tried to raise concerns about millions of dollars in federal funds that she thinks were misused and she was punished for it. Our Sabrina Franza spoke with her. Sabrina. When this deputy superintendent says she started asking about $13 million in federal elementary and secondary school emergency relief funds, wondering who spent it, she says she was put on paid and then unpaid leave. She wanted to sue before she says she'll be terminated. I hope that everyone within the sound of my voice recognizes that I am who I say I am. Dr. Sonia Whitaker, an educator, the deputy superintendent at Dalton West School District, and the National Education Policy Director for the education arm of the Rainbow Push Coalition. What I think about is who is gonna advocate and fight on behalf of the children, who is willing to stand on the right side of the law on behalf of vulnerable children children experiencing the impact of poverty. She said she wanted to know where $13 million of federal money meant to be for elementary and secondary school aged children went. The only response was a letter to suspend her. In a lawsuit filed in federal court, her counsel argues she asked for an audience with the board president, with members of the board of education, with the superintendent, but never got one. I did what all my training told me to do. I followed the process. And to have to stand before you today is very much a distraction. They claim her suspension was abrupt, defamatory, and an abuse of power. She was not only not allowed in the building, she was not given 
any sort of response as to why. Dr. Whitaker is asking for monetary relief and a trial by jury. She's also asking to be reinstated. We have called, emailed, tried to get in touch with the superintendent and every single member of the school board there. No one has gotten back to us. In the newsroom, Sabrina Franza, CBS News, Chicago. What is going on here? <laughs> like, what, what's, what's, it would be nice if they responded, right? The superintendent knew that this story was going to come out. So they should have some sort of rebuttal prepared. Hey, you know, Sonia Whitaker, Miss Whitaker said this, but this is what's going on. They're like, nah, we got nothing. Like, we got, we got to go consult our lawyers. We don't, you know, there's some issues going on. So from what I've, from what I saw of that story right there. So uh, Miss Whitaker is the deputy superintendent for the district, filed a lawsuit claiming that she was paid on, she was paid, she was on unpaid leave, or she was on paid leave and an unpaid leave after raising concerns about the misuse of $13 million in federal funds. $13 million that was intended for pandemic relief and other critical school needs. That's an extraordinary amount of money, $13 million. And she is saying that her suspension was a form of retaliation for speaking out against the mismanagement of the funds by the district officials. What is going on? And, and isn't isn't Tiffany Hayer and Keith Freeman named in another federal lawsuit related to the school district? I think they were accused of attempting to influence uh, the district's legal counsel by pressuring the district to hire a certain law firm. Remember that? This is crazy. This is crazy. There is no one person. I mean, over the last couple of weeks, I've been on YouTube and I've seen town meetings in Dalton years ago before Hanyard. So this, this idea that, yeah, Hanyard may be the worst, but there's, there's issues that have been spanned for years, probably decades, not necessarily just Dalton, but other parts of Chicago, other parts of the country. It This stuff isn't new. It's just, Tiffany Hay is just so ridiculous that we're paying attention to it now. She's so over the top with her nonsense, with the good burger stuff, with the dancing, with the yelling, with the, you know, all that disrespect, all of trying to make it about herself, that we're all recognizing that there is a lot of issues. She didn't start it, but she's definitely brought the attention to it that we all can look at, not just what happens, what's happening in Dalton, but across the country, in your hometown, in where you live. There could be a Tiffany Hanger that's just not as ridiculous and, 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 and out there trying to blow in your face. There was something else I wanted to discuss, actually. Let's see. I, oh, I, oh, yeah. Have you noticed when it comes to talking about the Hanyard story, if you are a content creator, you know that when you talk about Hanyard, you get more views, you get more likes, more engagement than any other piece of content. Unless you're really, a really successful, you've already been doing it well. Like, you know, Nate the Lawyer, he... It doesn't matter what he talks about because he's really good or Pink Book Lessons or others that have been dominating and doing really well, regardless of what topic they talk about. But like, if you want to jump in and talk about Tiffany Hanger, you will get more views than normal. That's not that's not something that is controversial. It's It's pretty obvious. It's such a crazy story. So what I've been noticing on YouTube not necessarily the independent creators, even those who are in Dalton or could, are around in that area. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about channels that there's no person. There's not a person. It's just a voice. And some of the some of the content is, I mean, quite frankly, it's made up. Tiffany Hayard, baby daddy in custody and snitches, please guilty. And you'd be like, wait, what? Like, I didn't hear that. What's going on? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't recall that story. And this is from the Urban Noir. And I have 135,000 subscribers. But uh, it makes no sense to even play it. But it's, it's you know, same stuff. All the content, all the B-roll that we all, all the content creators use. The person who made this video doesn't, don't realize that Tiffany Hayard's, the father, her child, is not Kamal. So... And first of all, no one's in jail. No one is in jail. 
<laughs> no, and this has, you know, it's got 34,000 views that you do make some money doing that. This one from Rivative, Rivative, Rivative. Tiffany Hayat tries to attack trustee in scandalous board meeting. We mean try to attack. Like, we mean like trying to attack, like, like legit attack or like verbal. And I'm, and I'm going, I'm kind of cycling through it. Okay. Disgrace Mayor Tiffany Hayat panics as after Fed leaks shocking footage. And I cycled. First of all, I'm in the video. What am I doing in the video? Like, what, what, what? What am I saying? And obviously the quest for transparency. If you check out some of Tiff, I, I can't hear myself talk. That sounds terrible. But I didn't talk about panicking about Fed leaking anything. What 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 the Feds leaked? I'm cycling through it. I see no leaks. What the Feds are leaking? What's happening here? And if you and you notice some of these all these channels, they don't really have a, a real person speaking. I, I don't know if it's Someone did mention it could be AI. What are you doing in the video? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing in the video. And then this one is like, this one from Hip Hype. Should be ashamed of y'all. Tiffany Hayard loses control after FBI freezes her assets. That's news to me. I don't remember that, that story. You guys remember that story? When did that happen? I don't remember that happening. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. A lot of black culture content a lot of it is that national inquirer just making stuff up not necessarily just only about tiffany Hayner, but i've seen about celebrities some of the stuff i see about certain athletes they'll just they'll just throw a title and you're like wait wait is that even true so this person actually did die or whatever like and it's hard to see or tell what is true it isn't but I have noticed a lot of a lot of these these videos where it's like, come on, you don't have to. The story is already bizarre and chaotic enough. You don't need to make up anything. You really don't. It's it's one of those stories where we, that's why a lot of us that don't even live there are trying to understand what's going on. You feel for the residents that are there. You see this these personal that personality of Tiffany Hayard and. The people that she is loyal with, the how everyone just like this is this even a real situation? So you don't need to make up something about FBI freezing your assets because it doesn't make any sense. 